I, I wanted to go back to, to practice a little bit. And I, I was thinking about it. I, I was thinking about all the psych work you kind of had to do in the beginning, you know, like as a coach and you're almost a psychiatrist or psychologist at the same time. Yeah. And, and I, I was thinking about these kids that or people that sometimes when they pass that first test, they almost pass it in like a fight or flight uh, mentality. You know what I mean? And that might give them a false sense of security that like every time I step up to this test, I'm going to pass because like I'm going to have that adrenaline or whatever happened that I so just happened to pass this test this time. But like if you think about catching a football, right, the first time that quarterback throws that ball at you, if you haven't been practicing, like and you get that adrenaline dump and you're not used to it and you catch that ball, like you might catch the ball, you might not. But like through practice, you know, like the 800th time that that quarterback throws you that ball, you, you do it without even thinking about it. And I think that's that comfort level that practicing these tests over and over and over again is what you want to get to so you can open up that you know, bandwidth so you can actually see the field, know what you're doing, and then take those steps, like you said, after that, after you catch it, to, to move the ball down the field. I'm not very good at sports references or no analogies. Great but analogy. That's what I got. <laughs> Great analogy. I, I love that analogy. I was a football player too, so it, I I didn't have hands like a wide receiver, so I just played linebacker. But okay. um that was uh it was a great analogy and it makes a lot of sense because I have people all the time that are you know showing up doing that PST and are just completely spent at the end of it. Like they just put it all on the line, which is great. They're throwing up at the end of it. Hey, you know, good effort. But then I tell them, now here's the kicker. You did really well, you know, on this test. You got all the scores you needed to do, but now let's try to make it so easy that you can do this after a workout. You can do this while you have the flu or some kind of chest congestion because you're going to get sick along this journey somewhere and you got to take one of these tests with a head cold or you know the flu or something like that and you still have to be able to crush this test. Um, so you got to take it up to that kind of a level to where, yes, it's going to suck. You know, but even on a bad day, you can crush this thing because you, you can't rely on that fight or flight, you know, mode all the time because it's, you know, it, it you may not even have the, you know, energy sources in your body to be able to do that. You know, that's going to depend a lot on your glycogen stores. It's going to depend on, you know, what you ate with, you know, how much blood sugar you have going on, how anaerobic you can be. It's going to depend on temperature. I mean, all of these things matter when you take these tests. And, yeah, the more you practice it, the better you will be. But, like like you said, you d also don't need to practice it every day, you know. Yeah. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you give, if you give yourself, you know, several months of training time, you can take that thing twice a month and it's it's sufficient. And then yeah. the, the good thing about practicing it so many times is that you learn a strategy on how to take that test, you know, when when to push, when to pull back, when to pace, you know, all of that comes together and, you know, when to hydrate, when to drink some electrolytes and sugar, all of that comes into play whenever you you do it enough, you can create a strategy to really win and crush. Yeah. yeah. Do I do I take the test on an empty stomach or having eaten two hours prior or do I just, hey, I can run on a full belly. I can't. <laughs> I can't do yeah. it. I can't do that on a full belly. Some people can, though, but um, I'm glad you said like it, 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 it just validates because I'm not, you know, a certified personal trainer like like you are and stuff like that. But one of the things that I kind of tell folks is, you know, because they ask, hey, how do how do I know when I'm ready? Because I, I passed a, a PST or I passed an IFT. It's like, well, can you, if you took that test this morning or you, or you had a normal training session this morning, you know, weights or whatever, or did, did, did 800 on the track, could I at 8 o'clock tonight go, in 30 minutes, you're doing a PST or an IFT and you better be able to pass. Like, but I just ate. I, well, sorry, man. That's that's what happens, you know, and you have to be able to pass it. It doesn't mean that you get the best numbers that you possibly could or you're as fast as you were or anything, but you at least need to be able to pass. And and you should be able to do that at, at any time, whether you've trained or not, or if you're lacking sleep. Like I said, even if it's 
just passing the minimums on that like surprise test, that's to me, that's when you know you're like, okay, I could probably fare pretty well in the in the pipeline, whether it's buds or aspect war or whatever. Yeah, that, that's good. It, you know, w- one thing I've learned from my students is, you know, when I see them doing the following, I see them showing up to workouts early in the morning and then they go to work like this one guy where I learned this next thing I'm about to tell you. He worked construction the rest of the day. Right. So he's always on his feet, doing something, working hard, manual labor. So he's ready for a day of spec ops training. Basically, yep. you know, he does some hard work and he's on his feet the rest of the day. You know, he's not working out two hours and then taking a nap and then working out another couple hours and taking a nap. And, you know, it's, he's not doing that. Not that that won't get you there. It's just different. Um, but I remember this guy does our workout and it was like a good butt kicking leg day with uh, running and hills and all that. And he said, oh, I got to go take my PST here in uh, an hour. I'm like, <laughs> damn, okay, that's pretty good. He goes, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want a PST to ruin my workout. So I was like, <laughs> hell yeah. That's badass. That is, a, that is a great mentality to have. And then he goes work construction the rest of the day. You know, that was just like, and guess what? He made it. Of course. You know, he, he made it through, you know, so it was just, just that kind of ability and mentality um, is going to get you to that next level. No, absolutely. And I, I love that kind of mentality. I just, it's, yeah, I would rather see that. I would rather see that than a guy puking at the end of a PST or an IFT. That's just attention seeking yeah. behavior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There is the old saying, you're not trying if you're not puking. And yeah, I get that, you know, but, you know, when when you have the ability to just crush it, then go crush it again, then go work all day, come back and do it again the next day, I was just like, and you're there. You're ready. That's the job.